Goedemiddag. I'm here with Jules from the city council in Maastricht. And we take a coffee break right in front of the council hall. And Jules, how is it working in Maastricht? Um, it's really exciting. Um, it's, a, it's a pretty uh, fragmented uh, um, city council, even for Dutch terms. Uh, many parties. We are in a coalition with, uh, with seven parties going really from the right-wing localist uh, party up to uh, the socialist uh, democrat uh, party so and everything in between so yeah that, that means that you have to uh, cooperate a lot uh, it also means that um, you uh, need to allow each other a lot of space and it, uh, it's very exciting to do so how many people are you in the council 39 and how many voters are in the council two two voters in 39 yeah, yeah. how's your role in the council um, so I focus myself um, uh, on social affairs and on um, uh, security, um, um, well, safety um, topics. And then when I'm looking at these topics, I really try to look from the point of view of this border region, right? So for people who are not from uh, the Aachen uh, border region, um, my uh, specific district, the south of Limburg, uh, borders for like 5% with the Netherlands. And for 95% with Germany, uh, French-speaking Belgium, and Dutch-speaking Belgium, right? So it's an extremely international region where um, very common people um, often uh, depend on a cross-border life. Um, for instance, a lot of businesses here, small businesses in the city, are owned by people who live in Belgium and in Germany. Um, but we notice very often that social affairs, uh, the welfare state, at the moment when these workers need the welfare state the most, the welfare state isn't there for them because they look from this national perspective and they don't realize that many people in their daily life have to depend on uh, several national systems. And so it's really very much European integration on an extremely local level, not on a large EU level, but on a very local level. That's what I try to focus on. This is how the Origio is working on, on the, in the positive thing. So um, which things... Do you have a vault impact, actually? Um, yeah, that's a very good question. Well, one of the things uh, where we had a very positive impact as Ma uh, Volt Maastricht is the fact that um, a majority of the students here in Maastricht are non-Dutch. Well, I, I heard that your partner was herself a student here, and that's very common, right? Um, and during the energy crisis, a lot of students couldn't afford the energy prices of their houses anymore. So uh, the Dutch government uh, created allowances for a Dutch student, but not for international students. And from uh, Maastricht's perspective, it was very much essential that the internationals also receive this, uh, this allowance. And we fought for that for months, really, and make it, uh, in order to make it available for them. And we managed. So actually, uh, a lot of international students uh, did uh, manage to cover their rents, uh, thanks to our more internationally oriented local policies. So, by the way, you guys should know that um, there is, uh, let's say, a growing uh, connection and mobility here in the area. For example, a train connection between Aachen and Maastricht, yeah. which is operating, I think, one train an hour. Yeah, once an hour. But it's now broken because of um, prioritizing non-passenger trains. Um, but, uh, yeah... The funny thing is that these guys from the city team here in Maastricht, from the political group, um, are mentioned in the German newspapers. There was an article in the Aachener Zeitung that um, Volt Maastricht demands the German, the Deutschland ticket, the German train ticket, um, get connected until uh, Maastricht and the, the, the Limburg area. Yeah. Very smart. And this is something you, you'd never heard from other parties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, how was the reaction on that here in the in Maastricht? On the one hand, very positive, and indeed, as you say, uh, there are, is increasing international mobility. So we really are happy that there is a platform that you know draws this attention across the border. On the other hand, I also try to be uh, still, even in those optimistic moments, very critical. Let's not forget that this train station here in Maastricht. Uh, when it was built in the late 19th century, it was there in order to connect Maastricht with Aachen. Back then, it was more normal to have um, cross-border uh, train transport than today. So I think we have still 
many, many uh, steps uh, to make. And I definitely don't believe in the too optimistic idea that we just will simply integrate further in Europe, right? We actually have to fight for that uh, in politics. But I think we can prove it in the, in the local examples, how is it working? And this is yeah. always the thing um, we see that these ideas and possibilities are not in the responsibility of Amsterdam and mm -hmm. Berlin and especially not Brussels, but they need to set the framework that we have the, um, the possibilities to make these uh, cross-border, um, let's say, um, politics. Uh, I give Brexit. you one. I give you one example. This we were talking about it from the train station um, last weekend. There was a big techno festival uh, in Kerkrade near Herzogenrath. You may know this city because the cloister is on the Dutch side and the castle is on the German side, and for centuries it was one community um, and or one village. Um, and the German authorities were not informed. So about the party, about the party, yes, yes. not about the. <laughs> the yeah. So they were not about informed about the party, which was a little bit insane because um, it was really, really loud. And you need to know that in uh, the Netherlands, they advise you to bring your earplugs to a party. And nearly every other European country, um, it's forbidden to have this loud music. But anyway, it happened, and a lot of German people called the police and said, "Hey, it's too loud," and it was more than five to 10 kilometers away, it was still too loud. And in this case, there must be a much more yeah. uh, better communication. And there is a common uh, police station with two uh, police officers from both countries. Right. There is a, a building on the, on the border in Herzogenrath yeah. for these in, yeah. internal and international cross-border affairs. Mm -hmm. But we still can increase this. This is why you're talking here, and this is just a pitch. I think we'll have a, um, a talk in the next months before the elections in the Netherlands. Definitely. So if you're interested in the cross-border communication, cross-border politics, and if you have any ideas or topics you would like to hear, to listen, or to talk with us, let us know, because we need to leave the room now, I think, because <laughs> the coffee is over and they're waiting. So thank you.